A new couple goes on their first honeymoon, dreaming of enjoying the ventures will not only be full of passion but also a big mystery. This couple unaware what can cause this endless passion. 1914 The First World War Belgian troops are ordered to attack the enemy in three hours to take the Brit. The plan seems impossible but Young Pot suggests attacking immediately. Under the cover of smoke the company conducts a successful operation and rejoices in the victory. The captain accidentally hits a booby trap as a result of which he loses his life and P.U.O. ends up in the hospital. Catherine visits the disfigured man and promises to be with him and also offers to hide the scars with a mustache. The year is 1937, who visits a London club and watches the performance of the blues singer Slalom. Simon and Jackie a couple are dancing passionately in the middle of the playground is Sean soon the girl's friend the wealthy Lynn appears at the event. Having met her friend's fiancé the rich woman goes to dance with him, P.U.O. realizes that this does not bode well as the dance is too hot. Jackie watches her friend with hatred and shows jealousy. Six weeks later P.U.O. goes to Egypt where he enjoys the local attractions. At some point he notices a man with a flying snake on one of the pyramids. In it he recognizes his friend Beck, invited to the wedding of a friend. He introduces the detective to his mother and the amazing artist Euphemia. Book invites Pooh to join them at the Cataract Hotel in Aswan where Lynn and Simon are getting married. Soon invited guests gather in the hall and Book briefly tells the detective about each of them. Among those present are the maid Louise the singer Salem and her niece who has been friends with Lynette for a long time. Also arriving at the hotel were Lynette's godmother and her personal nurse. A rich girl's cousin who manages her finances and a doctor who was in love with Lena before her marriage. Sometime later Jackie appears at the celebration stalking the newlyweds and, unable to accept that Simon left her for her best friend breaking off the engagement. Leonard is afraid of her friend and asks P.U.O. to protect her and her husband from Jackie but the detective politely refuses. A little later he decides to personally talk to Jackie and tries to convince her to stop the revenge plan but the girl shows him a small gun hidden in her purse. In the evening Poro suggests that the couple abandon their honeymoon and run away hiding in a country castle. In the morning the young family ignoring the warnings of the detective decides to go on a honeymoon trip along the Nile inviting everyone except Jackie. The group goes by boat to the cruise ship Karnak where they will spend several days. Lynnet confesses that she does not trust any of the guests as everyone can wish her harm. Pooh warns that he did not go on a trip for the sake of a married couple as he has other more important business to attend to. In the evening Andrew asks Lynnet to sign important documents but the girl is too busy. Her husband offers to sign the contract without reading them but Rosalie reminds her friend that there is no need for haste in such matters. In a private conversation book confesses to Piet that he has hot feelings for Rosalie because this is a special girl. He's afraid that his mother will not approve of his choice and does not know how to tell her about his feelings for a dark-skinned girl from a poor family. Who asks his friend not to be afraid because love is beautiful and this feeling should not have obstacles. The next morning a cruise ship stops near Abu Simbel and guests head ashore to view the statue of Ramesses and his wives. Beck doesn't hurry inside as Rosalie is hiding nearby and wants to be alone with him. The boy's mother notices this and criticizes him for choosing a girl promising never to approve of their possible marriage. Salem notices her niece in the company of a Beck tree and thinks that they are a wonderful couple. Communicating with P.U.O. the singer arouses a man's genuine interest because she is a very intelligent and extraordinary woman who can make a lasting impression. Meanwhile Lynette and Simon decide to have some fun and go to the top of an architectural structure. Once outside the couple passionately brushes their lips and decides to enjoy the fantastic time. At some point they notice a boulder falling on them and miraculously manage to hide avoiding the disaster. Soon a sandstorm starts and the group has to hide inside the building to wait for the weather conditions to improve. A few hours later the newlyweds and their guests return to the boat and meet Jackie. The girl bought a ticket for the tour and now they can't get rid of her which scares Lyot even more. During dinner P.U.O. apologizes to Rosalie as they accidentally mixed up their diaries. Here Lynette and Simon admit that they decided to break off their honeymoon prematurely tomorrow morning they would get off the boat and go home so that they wouldn't have to see Jackie or be in any danger from an unstable girl. Celebrating this P.U.O. drinks with the newlyweds which makes him feel ill and goes to bed earlier than the others. Only Beck and Rosalie Lynn and Simon and Jackie remain in the restaurant offended by the newlyweds. The couple openly provokes the girl stating that they managed to enjoy the time shortly before her appearance. Lynette goes to her cabin and asks her husband not to stay too long. Simon defiantly humiliates Jackie in front of witnesses admitting that he never had feelings for her. Angry the girl pulls a gun out of her purse and shoots Simon in the leg. Realizing that she did something stupid Jackie decides to take her own life but Rosalie knocks the gun out of her hands. Rosalie and Book take Jackie to Nurse Bauer ST calm her down and check on her. The nurse gives Jackie a sleeping pill causing her to go to bed. 
Rosalie and Book also found Dr. Wincham to give Simon first aid and treat the wound on his leg. The next morning Louise goes to Lynette's cabin and screams in horror when she finds the lifeless body of a rich girl in bed. She was shot in the temple with a gun of the same caliber as Jackie's which disappeared without a trace. Realizing that the criminal is on board the ship P.U.O. asks the team to start searching for the gun, presumably it is hidden among the passenger's personal belongings but it can also be overboard as evidence exposing the criminal. Wyndham examines Lynette's body and reports the approximate time of this act grieving for the loss of the girl he has had feelings all his life. Pero understands that without him no one can expose the criminal so he takes up this case. The first thing he does is talk to Rosalie Book and Miss Bao make sure that neither Simon or Jackie could have done this. The girl was under the care of a nurse and under the influence of sleeping pills and Simon was injured and spent the night in another cabin in the presence of a doctor. Simon is the last to learn of the case and mourns his wife's body begging her to find the culprit. Soon Pooh discovers that another thing has been committed as Lynette's precious necklace has been stolen. The first suspect is her maid Louise who may have had a motive to commit an unbelievable case. The maid says that a couple of years ago she wanted to leave Lynette and get married but the rich woman offered her fans money to pay off debts provided that he refused her. The man agreed and asked for Louise but she didn't commit the unbelievable. Dr. Windlesham is next suspected as he was engaged to Lyot shortly before her wedding to Simon. The man admits that he was into the girl but would never hurt her. He was a pathetic coward who wanted to be close to Lyot but couldn't do anything except watching her happiness in the arms of another man. Andrew becomes the third suspect as he kept double entry accounting and stole Lynette's money. The relative does not deny the fraud but shows a pistol of a different caliber which he always has with him. He wouldn't have risked stealing someone else's weapons moreover the case wasn't spontaneous but carefully thought out. Another victim of the detective's suspicions is Mrs. Bowers whose family was ruined by Lynette's father during the Great Depression. Van Schuyler. Lynette's godmother also had a motive and could have taken a relative's life for the sake of an inheritance. They both might have planned the case but they probably didn't. Piero noticed that the nurse's bed was unmolested and realized that Bowers and Vayner were secret clo who carefully concealed their affair. The women were only concerned about hiding their relationship and had nothing to do with Lynette's passing. Soon the crew of the ship catches a gun in the river wrapped in a missing Van Schuyler scarf and a bloody handkerchief. The gun was fired twice which confirms that this particular gun was used against Lynette. Salome and Rosalie come under suspicion because of the rich woman's racist remarks towards them but that was a long time ago. Moreover the singer has her own pistol of the same caliber but it has not been fired for a long time. Euphemia finds the missing necklace among her belongings and he suspects her but quickly realizes that the artist was not involved in what happened. Later P.U.O. admits that it wasn't by chance that he ended up in Egypt since Euphemia specifically hired him. He took Rosalie's diary and followed her family to study the girl and her mother. The detective came to the conclusion that Rosalie and Beck are the perfect couple but this verdict does not suit anyone. An enraged Rosalie runs away and P.U.O. rushes after her to apologize. Once on deck they see Louise's body in the paddle wheel and learn that less than an hour ago someone sent the girl to the other world using a doctor scalpel. The girl has money in her pocket which means that she was a witness to the this and blackmailed the man who took Lynette's life. On the wall Pooh notices a possible silhouette of a witness to the latest thing and arranges a final interrogation. It features Beck and Simon. The friend under pressure from Paro gives up and confesses that he was the first to discover Lynette's body and stole the neck in order to gain financial independence. He witnessed the second case and is ready to name the culprit but at that moment someone shoots the man and he falls into an eternal sleep. P.U.O. pursues the criminal but finds only a pistol belonging to Andrew abandoned on the deck. Pooh gathers everyone in the steamer's bar to tell the truth about what is happening. Andrew tried to get rid of Lynette and threw a rock on her but realized the mistake and gave up the idea. The real culprit turned out to be Simon who drugged P.U.O. with sleeping pills. After an argument with Jackie he rushed to his wife's cabin and shot her and then came back and wounded himself in the leg to simulate the wound he used with artist's red paint which made it possible to deflect suspicion from himself. Naturally he did not do it himself because another person took the lives of Louise and Book. This was done by Jackie who acted as the mastermind. Jackie and Simon had still mutual feelings and they just wanted Lynette's wealth. Jackie fired a blank round at the man giving them both an alibi. After learning that Louise was a witness to the case, Jackie took her life and then shot back. The main piece of evidence is a handkerchief stained not with liquid but with paint. Realizing that they have been exposed Jackie shoots Simon in the back eliminating both him and herself in one shot. During the disembarkation of passengers P.U.O. says goodbye to the survivors and hesitates to to confess his feelings to Salem. Six months later he goes to London and shows up at a club where a woman sings. The detective shaved off his mustache not afraid to show his scars to the woman he adored. 
That's the end guys. Hope you enjoyed the video.